200 newton meters and uh, 300 kilowatts power, I can make something drag we, down the street. Right. Even if it's dragging sparks. But this is a great electric drive unit. How do I know it's the one in the, in the Evora? Well, they listed uh, the Evora's model number is 414, and that's because they're rating it in metric horsepower because that's how it's rated by the engineers in Germany. Lotus is in England. England, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it happens to be two motors. So that's how uh, um, Lotus is doing this um, torque balancing thing as part of their uh, stability system is by independently modulating those two motors. Those two motors, yeah. So you have different drive on the rear wheels. You can actually, you know, aid in turning by turning one of them faster than the other mm -hmm. while you're steering at low speeds. Mm -hmm. That would work. And... Uh, so, but I'm fascinated with this uh, motor unit. We got to have one. All right. Um, and, uh, but the Lotus thing is particularly good. Getrag sounds like, and they sell primarily to OEMs, but it sounds like they're taking a little wider view. They have a product line of eight different drivetrains now that they're kind of going public on, and I'm hoping uh, they would sell for money if we would talk to them very nicely. And that's a continuous problem. All these vendors, they want to sell the OEMs. Now, Getrag does sell, sell the OEMs. All the yep. little guys we come across are constantly, we only sell the OEMs. Right, yep. Everybody always sells the OEMs. How many OEMs have you sold to? Well, uh, counting all the ones we're talking to? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Right. None. None. <laughs> <laughs> but we just don't want to sell to the public because... They might actually buy it. They might actually buy it. Then we'd have to ship it. We don't have anybody to wrap it up. And all, really all those only questions four people here yeah. <laughs> were uh, really an intellectual property company. Right. Well, let me tell you something. I hope all of you go sell something to an OEM. When you get done, come back and talk to me. You'll be cured <laughs> of the OEM sales <laughs> thing. Right. OEM syndrome. The little OEMs go broke and stick you on what they owe you. And the big OEMs. Don't go broke. They simply, after buying some of your stuff, get you all tooled up, then they tell you what the real price is going to be. They break you. <laughs> and, and you can either take it or go out of business. Right. And they, uh, you march pretty much to their tune. <laughs> so that's why I don't... Uh, we have a bunch of OEMs watching our videos, so I probably shouldn't speak this way, but I don't want to be an OEM. That's right. I don't want to sell anything to an OEM. I really don't want to buy anything from an OEM, to tell you the truth. I'm into this um, thing, let's make our own cars, mm -hmm. and let's use a non-proprietary, open source um, type uh, thing. That, that's really been our philosophy, yes. I want to program the charger to do what I want it to do, and I want to program the controller to do what I want it to do. And I want to be able to buy parts and make my own car, and I think that's a great thing. I think everybody ought to do that. Apparently, I'm not alone. What's this Trexa announcement? Well, Trexa has been have announced a uh, a platform that they're that they have done, and uh, I'm sure we'll be able to show a show a shot of this up on the screen. Yeah, if we get that music to quit playing. I know that darn uh, music. This, this then is the I'll, Trexa. I'll put yeah. a photo of this up on the screen when we but, edit it in. But but they're saying that so they this this would comes with wheels, front and rear suspension batteries and motor charger mm -hmm. and so we've got a flat little as we'll be able to see a uh, platform that anybody now could build a body mm -hmm. passenger compartment you could do really any type of vehicle as long as it's 96 uh, inch wheelbase and you can tool up for that they've got a couple of different um, uh, a couple of different setups on one they're not saying what size motor but they're saying they could get it out for about fifteen sixteen thousand mm -hmm. um, dollars with a uh, Seven kilowatt battery pack. They're not talking about the motor uh, charger. Uh, oh, choice of wheelbase lengths up to 96 inches. I, I love this stuff. These guys have got to be nuts. This is the, this is a roller, but it's the anti-roller. Instead of special editions, they sell you a car with no drivetrain. These guys are selling you a drivetrain with no, no car. No car, right. But a complete rolling understructure with the batteries built in up to a 20 kilowatt lithium right. ion pack, 
Um, the one I would be interested in right. is the thirty-two thousand. saying they would spec models. around thirty-two. It has two electric motors, um, a twenty-eight kilowatt uh, pack, a six kilowatt charger built in, mm -hmm. uh, all the electronics, um, uh, an SDK uh, like a software development kit mm -hmm. that yep. anybody can use to tie into the instrumentation and uh, you know the control open source and, yep. that, oh, no, no, an open, <laughs> open source, source. <laughs> drivetrain. Yeah. I wish I, I should have thought of this. This is a this is a great idea. I don't. These guys have come out of nowhere, like January nineteenth right. or something, um, from nowhere. Uh, so I don't know if they're flakes or not. But this is a great idea. Is just to develop a rolling electric car chassis um, with different modules, uh, sort of cafeteria style, where the people can come and order and put any kit card body they can develop get to it. fit, uh, or make their own carbon fiber, whatever. Uh, you know, so that's. Uh, I think it's a great idea, and it's kind of an open source uh, concept. Um, we've been talking a lot about chargers. Um, the uh, we've kind of traced down a very interesting one. I've said all along these batteries will charge as fast as you want within reason. And I've got a system kind of set up to charge the Mini in about an hour, hour and a half. Uh, we're going to do something beyond that. I'm going to probably have to build a charger with a... Uh, truck box full of batteries here in the garage. Right. They'll Do use it. the batteries to DC. provide the power. Yep. And the charger will charge the batteries when I'm not here. And when I pull in, the charger will take the power from the batteries and use it to charge the car. Same PWM module. We may even do that as some sort of product for home fast chargers. But here's a guy, uh, Acre Wade, that's come up with a charging station. This really comes out of a thing with a Tokyo Electric Power Company. They did a study of 300 EV owners in Tokyo. In Tokyo, okay. And what they found was if they could charge their cars somewhere, they were more comfortable with electric cars. Duh. You know, I really am not. I, it's fine for me to charge in the garage. To charge at home. I don't need a yeah. charging place. But if I did need a charging place, I don't want to pull up to a restaurant and plug in my car for eight hours. That's it's a, a long, lot, it's a long meal. A lot of cups of coffee. <laughs> I'd be buzzing pretty hard by the time I came out of the diner uh, to to pick up my fully charged car. Um, they've come up with the concept of um, level three chargers. Some fast chargers. Um, yeah. Fast chargers. Yeah. Wow. And the reason I'm kind of on this Acre Wade thing. They already do fast chargers, and they're available, and you can buy them. Uh, they only do up to 80 volts. Again, most of our heritage seems to come from the forklift industry. Yep. And Anchor Wade makes, uh, they've got chargers up to 40 kilowatts, but only wow. up to 80 volts. And okay. so you can charge a forklift real quick. They wouldn't do us much good with their current product. Right. Line. But they've come up with a... A thing that looks like a gas pump, um, except it, and it takes credit cards and displays your kilowatt hours and your price. But this will do 50 volts DC to 550 volts DC and up to 600 amps at 420 volts DC. That would be quick. Now, they've got units that have um, local storage, which means batteries like I'm talking about. Right. Or without, but some of this is like, you know, service required with no energy storage for a, an eight station, 100 kilowatt each station is like 800 kilowatt electric service, 400 volt, three phase. Okay. Yeah. Well, so you, you pretty much got to be next to a substation. You'd here. be pulling it right out of there. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> And I think they'll wind up doing it with batteries. This is still a little bit, you know, I mean, uh, part of the problem with so much of the noise about electric cars right now is they're just unobtainium. Right. Half it the is, stuff we come across, we call them and know you can't really have it. Yeah. At and, all. And, uh, you know, we, sort of the TV gig is now they're kind of, you know, 
noting that I guess we're press now. I don't think of it precisely that way, but uh, so they rush to assure us that they they do have them, <laughs> yeah. and we tell we them, just, okay, we're going to send a check, wait, wait, and they're like, well, wait, why would you want to do that? Your TV show. Well, I want one of the things. Well, we don't. We don't really have it. <laughs> don't really have it. Not right now, yeah. but we're going to have it. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons I know this is still a little bit unobtainium is that the connector types are SAEJ1772 conforming. When are we going to get our J1772 oh, 2009 uh, level 2 connectors? Uh, work 